In this video, we're going to introduce you to level effects. These effects are a great way to non-destructively edit your clip art. Once we show you how they work, we're then going to take those level effects and use them to help create this coat of arms that you see in front of you. Before we get too far into this tutorial, let's have a look at how you can access the level effects in your software. So if you have a look at your modeling tab, in your component tree, you have your levels. Now this is a regular file that I just created. So there's only one level by default. And if I hover over that level and I right click on it, you'll see that about midway down the drop down menu, there are two different level effects listed, clipping and mirror mode. Now it's important to remember that these are called level effects for a reason. They only affect the content that's on the level that is taking advantage of these level effects. So be sure that if you would like to clip a set of components, then make sure that those components are on the level that you've chosen to clip in exactly the same with mirror mode. To better understand the result of using one of these level effects, let's have a look at a sample file. To get started, we're going to open up a fresh new copy of our software, and we're going to choose to open an existing file. In our tutorials folder, you'll see a file called level-effects-intro.crv. Let's select that and open it up. Now, if we have a look at our modeling tab, you're going to see we have two different levels already set up, one called mirror mode and one called clipping. If we have a look at our drop down for our layer manager, you'll see that we have two layers. One is called clipping and one is called mirror mode. When we're working in this file, we're going to make sure that we have the corresponding layer turned on when we're working with the level with the same name. But for now, we're just going to leave clipping highlighted and over here clipping is in red because we don't have any content showing on that. Let's tile our views. And now let's have a look and see what we have in the clipping level. Let's click the plus sign and let's turn on that level. So to get started, I've already imported in the tropical fish from the free clip art that you get with your software. And currently right now, because the way the level is set up, if I select the fish, I can move them anywhere around in my job space and nothing particularly interesting happens to it at all, unless I happen to move off of my job space and then he will get clipped. Let's move him back to the center. Now with level clipping, we need to have a vector selected in order to be able to use that. So for now, what we're gonna do is choose the circle and then we're gonna right click on clipping and go down to clipping. And we're gonna choose apply. And if I off click that circle, and now I go ahead and drag the fish around, you'll see what's gonna happen. And particularly pay attention to the 3D view. Note that the fish is now being clipped off, so his tail is missing in the 3D view, but you can still see the silhouette of the full component in the 3D view. Now seeing as the component has been clipped, then any tooling that you create, any 3D tool pads that you create on this composite model, will actually only be created on the part of the fish that has not been clipped. So as you can see in the 2D view, anything outside of the vector that we selected to use as our clipping vector has been clipped off. And it's pretty dynamic. I can move the fish around that vector as much as I want, and it will clip depending on the position of my fish. Now it's important to remember that if I choose to move the actual clipping vector around, that nothing will happen at all until we go back to our clipping level, right click on it, go down to clipping and ask to update the location of that vector. And you see that that has now been reflected in my 3D view. Let's put the circle back to the center again and do that one more time. Now what happens if we want to create a vector boundary around this clipped component? Well, let's just see. Let's choose that component and go over here to our 3D modeling tools and choose create vector boundary around selected components. And I'll click that. And to better see what's happening in the 2D view, let's just go ahead and hide the tropical fish just for a second. 
As you can see, the resulted boundary is only of the part of the fish that has not been clipped. If we turn back on our fish component, you'll see that in the 3D view, it matches, or what you can see in the 3D view matches the vector that the software created for us in our 2D view. This is particularly important if you have a composition with several different levels in it, and one of them happens to be a clipping level. When you choose all the components, then the software takes into consideration what has been clipped on those levels and will give you the resulting vector. This is great for creating a profile cut. This is my top tip that you should use when you're trying to keep your component tree organized when you have a clipping level in amongst a bunch of other different levels. Because your level icon does not change to reflect that this is a level that's using the level effect clipping, then what I do is I go ahead and rename this level with a dash clip at the end. And that way I know that this level is using the level effect now to move on to mirror mode, let's just go ahead and hide this level, shrink up our component tree. Let's maximize this level, turn on that level, make sure it's selected as our current level. Go up here to our layers manager, turn off clipping, turn on the mirror mode layer, and then make sure that's selected and then off click that. Let's first have a look at our 2D view. You're gonna see that when I set up this job, I set up my datum to the center. So I have these four quadrants being shown here, and this will help us better understand what's happening with this level effect. We also have one piece of clip art already imported in, and this is a flourish that comes with the free clip art packs that you can choose to install with your software. And in our 3D view, of course, we have the composite model that we can see there. And currently right now, it's only just this flourish. Over here in our component tree, we have that flourish listed. And if I want to now go ahead and access this level effect, I just need to right click on this level and go down to mirror mode. Now, currently right now, there's no mirroring turned on, but I've got a bunch of different options here that I can choose to turn on that will affect my composite model. I can choose to mirror left to right, right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top, top left quadrant, top right quadrant, bottom left quadrant, and bottom right qu quadrant. So let's start off with the first one and we'll choose left to right. So this is called mirror mode for a reason and it's mirroring across the plane that we told it, told it to. So we asked it to mirror left to right and right now it's mirroring whatever is on the left-hand side of this center line to the right-hand side. And you see that the resulting composite model is pretty interesting. Now nothing has changed in the 2D view, but it has been reflected in the 3D view. Also, unlike the level clipping, mirror mode does change the level icon to reflect what you have chosen. So right now we have left to right. So if I go ahead and right click on this, and change my mirror mode to top to bottom, you'll see that the icon has changed and so has the result in my composite model. Now this is a pretty exciting feature because you can now create all kinds of different clip art from one piece of clip art that you see in your 2D view. If I right click, go down to mirror mode, go down to bottom to top. If I go ahead and go down to top left quadrant, it's going to mirror what's in this quadrant to all the other three. And you'll see again, we get a nice, interesting new composite model showing there. We'll just slowly go through each one of these so you get a sense of what's going to happen. Now, what's really quite nice about this feature is if I choose this component, you'll see that in the 3D view, I've got my pink silhouette of my actual component. And if I move it around, it automatically updates and is very dynamic for what's going on. And I can go ahead and create all kinds of interesting different pieces of clip art from this one piece that I have in my 2D view on that mirror mode level that I've chosen to use that level effect. Now again, like with the level clipping, if I choose this component and decide I'd like to create a vector boundary around that component, 
as soon as I click that, I get a vector boundary of the composite model, which is really handy if I'm going to, again, use this vector to create a profile cut around some 3D tooling that I'm going to develop from the composite model. And if I want to, I can go back and I can go to my mirror mode and I can turn that off in the end if I would like. And we can delete this vector. Now from here, we can go ahead and take those two level effects and create some pretty interesting compositions it's hard to believe that this coat of arms composition was created using the free clip art that you get with your software and the level effects that you just saw me demonstrate. Now, the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how to create this from the start, but I want to reassure you that I have saved off this file and put it in your tutorials folder so you can load it in afterwards and have a closer look at what I've done. Let's start off with a fresh new copy of our software, and we're going to create a new file. This is going to be a single-sided job. The width is 10, the height is 10, and we're going to make the thickness to be 1 inch. We're going to zero off our material surface. Our datum will be set to the center. As I mentioned earlier, it makes it a little bit easier to visualize and see what's going to be happening when we use the mirror mode. We're going to use our modeling resolution. We're going to set it to very high because we'll be using some 3D content, and we're going to click OK. Now, one thing that's great about Coat of Arms is that there are elements to it that are mirrored and symmetrical. So this is a great example of how we can use mirror mode to get the final result that we want. And also we can use our level clipping to clip out bits of other models that we may want to use to embellish our coat of arms with. So I'll start off by having a look at the clip art. And now I've installed all the clip art that's come free with our software. And so what I want to do is I want to start off with the center of my coat of arms and work my way out. So I'm going to go down to panels and shields. And I'm going to scroll through all of the panels and shields that I have installed. And I'm going to choose to use shield 9-iii. So I'll double click on that. And when I do that, it's going to be imported into the center of my job space. And let's just go ahead and tile our views so we can see what's happening. Now I like to work with our software very organically when I'm creating a layout like this. So I'm not going to use too many hard numbers. I will on occasions that you can might find it easier to follow along. But for me, I'm just going to slowly start to piece this together and in the end make all the adjustments to make it correct. And then I'll have my end result. So the next thing I want to bring in is going to be a helmet and feathers. Now, typically with a coat of arms, there's generally a helmet with maybe a crown on it or an animal above it. Well, in this case, in our software, under the objects and people section of our clip art, a helmet with plume. So let's double click on that. And you'll see it's been imported into our 2D view and our 3D view. And I'm just going to grab the center handle here I hold down my Alt key and drag it straight up and kind of place it on top of my coat of arms. Now, unfortunately, it's a bit too big and sticks at the top of my job space. So holding down my Shift key, I'm going to select both, both pieces of that content, click again, and then I can hold down my Alt key and I can move that down a bit so I can better see what's happening. Now, it's not all going to fit into my job space. So let's have a think about how the relationship should be between these two components. Let's size down our helmet just a little bit here. And we can again hold our Alt key down and drag it down to fit on top of our shield. And that looks pretty good, except for again, I think we'll select both of these objects and size them down a bit just so they fit better inside of our job space. We'll use our cursor keys to nudge that up just a little bit. Now, again, typically with a coat of arms, there's kind of a banner or a ribbon on the bottom of it. So that way you can engrave a name or a saying. So in our ribbons and banners section, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the banner here. And I'm going to drag it down again by selecting the center control handle and then holding down my alt key and dragging it down just to the bottom of my shield. And to flip it vertically, I'm just going to press V on my keyboard to flip it upside down. And then I'll grab that middle handle again and drag it up into where I think it might fit in my final layout. Somewhere's around there. Looks pretty good. Now, overall, I'm pretty happy with that. 
So let's go ahead back to our modeling tab for a moment and look at our component tree. So we have the one level that we were given when we set up our job, and then we have our three components listed underneath that. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this level by selecting it, right clicking on it and going down to rename. We're going to call this center just so we have a better idea of what we're doing. And then we're going to create a brand new level. So I'm going to hover over top of that level. I'm going to right click and say insert a new level. And this level we are going to rename and we are going to call it flourishes. Now, if I slow double click on that, I'll be brought up my, to my rename feature and I can just type in F L O U R flourishes. Perfect. Let's just off click that. Now you'll see that this level is highlighted and any clip art that I bring into the software will be automatically put on that level. So let's have a look at our clip art tab again. And we're going to go, go down to the decorative section. And if we scroll down a bit, we're looking for flourish repeat number two. This is the one right here. Let's just double click on that and bring it into our software. Now using these control handles, I can go ahead now and size this to what I'd like it to be. Maybe position it off to the side here. You rotate it around a bit and move it into place. Somewhere around there maybe in the end. Now having a bit of a closer look at this, I would like for maybe this area right here of my flourish that you can see in the 3D view, maybe wrap around the side of my helmet. So with this selected, if I press H on my keyboard, I can flip that over and I can rotate that into place and try to angle it a bit so that it ends up fitting in there a little bit nicer, maybe more up and down like that might be a little bit better. And I can slide that into place, maybe around there somewhere. I think I want to make it just a little bit bigger. You see it kind of naturally fits in there quite nice. And I think I'm still going to make it just a little bit bigger again. Turn that around a bit, move it down. Maybe make it a bit smaller. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that right there where it sits. Now let's go ahead and try out a mirror mode for this particular level. Let's go back to our modeling tree for a second and right click on that level and we're going to choose our level effect mirror mode and we're going to choose top left quadrant and see what happens in our 3D view. Uh, that looks pretty nice in the end. Now, one of the things that you probably already noticed is that this level is being added to the level below it. And what's happening is we're getting the overlap of the flourish on top of our shield. So if we right click on the level called flourishes and change the combine mode to merge, you'll see that'll change quite drastically and we'll see what's going on. Now, just to make things a little bit easier to see, maybe we should change some of the properties of our shield and our helmet and our ribbon so that we can get a sense of how this is tucking in behind our shield just a little bit better. So to do that, what we're going to do is go back to our center level and we are going to choose all of these components by holding down our shift key, go up to our component properties, and we're going to add a bit of base height to everything. So let's make that 0.1 and then press the space bar and everything should come a little bit higher. Let's change that maybe to 0.15, a little bit more, 0.175 maybe. Uh, we see a, down here there's still a little spot that's kind of covering it up there. So let's just make that, let's make a 0.2 and press the space bar. And there we have that. If we take a look at our 3D view, you'll see that now everything is kind of rising up just a little bit above that flourish. And if we want to, we can select the flourish and we can just maybe scale that down to be a quarter inch thick. And that way it actually fits in there even nicer. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And you can see how using Mirror Merge gave me this nice new flourish that I could use behind my shield. Now that looks great and all, but I still think we can do a little bit more work. There's some area down here that could use a bit more flourish and maybe we could actually make it look a little bit more smooth around here. So let's close this down. 
Now, before we go too much farther, I'm still going to adjust the position of this flourish just a little bit. I think I'd like to have this little V right here actually kind of sit in here. So just quickly go ahead and do that with this guy right here. Rotate him around a little bit and make it so that maybe that V is going to fit in there just so. And that'll make it look just a little bit more interesting and look like it kind of we had planned this all the time to have it sit like that. And that looks pretty okay. Maybe we can almost touch the helmet. That looks great right there. I like that a lot. Okay, now to fill in this area, we're going to drag this component while holding down the control key. So if I do that, what you're going to see is I'm going to get a copy of it. And we're going to drag it down to right about here maybe and then let go. And then we can kind of just move it around a little bit. And I'm watching what's going on in the 3D view to get a sense of what's happening to my layout. And I kind of like that. And I think it will look really good if I actually decrease the shape height of this particular flourish. So to do that, I can go up here to my component properties and click that. And we're going to change this to be maybe 0.15 of an inch and press the space bar. Then we can close this down. And we can see that when we off click that, it actually fills in that space quite nicely over there in our 3D composite model. Now, if we go ahead and just move that around a little bit, I think that we can get just a slightly better kind of presentation. And again, using this mirror mode, we can, it's automatically updated in our 3D view so we can get a really good sense of what is happening here to our actual layout as we go. Just kind of play around with that just a little bit. Kind of get the shape that we want. Just looking at the different sort of curves and so on that happens. And you know what? I kind of like that like that. It looks pretty good. So again, we're just going to go ahead and change that thickness again down to maybe one, just so we don't see as much through there. And maybe we can go ahead and move this guy down, or maybe up a little bit. Again, we're just playing around with the way that we're seeing all this stuff going on. Of course, we could do this for days, I think. Let's off click that and I think that looks pretty good. You got lots of different flourish going on there. It looks really intricate. That looks really, really good, I think, in the end. Okay, so the next thing I want to take a look at is just how the shield and the helmet and the ribbon are kind of playing with each other, like how they're interacting with each other. So you'll see how the ribbon is merging in with the top of the shield and the helmet doesn't quite look right here at the bottom. I think we could do a nicer job with that. So the first thing I want to take a peek at is the shield just to make sure we know what the heights are set at. So because we have our component property still open, I didn't close it down. If I select that component, you'll see that up will pop our properties for that selected component. So let's have a look. Let's change this to be a little bit um, thicker, maybe. Okay, that's all right. And it gives it a little bit more shape, which is good. And let's have a look at our helmet. Let's do the same for it. Let's change this to be maybe um, uh, Let's go with one. That's way, way too much. 0.175. And no. Let's just go up a little bit here as we go and see if we can get that to fit in just a little bit nicer. It's almost like we want to get enough shape height so that we can get enough of a difference between the point on the front of the, sh of the helmet and then also the back and then move it down into place where it belongs. Let's go with that. And then let's just drop this down a little bit to uh, that maybe no, a little bit more. Let's make that five. Now, like I mentioned before, I like to do this organically and just kind of move the parts around until I get something that I think looks pretty good. 
I'm almost happy with that. Almost. But not quite. Let's just mess around a little bit more with it just to see if we can get that a little bit better. Let's make this 6.5. And then let's drop this down to be 0 0.75. Zero two. There we go. We're getting there. Zero one. Okay, there we are. I'm happy with that. Now it looks like it's actually rising up over top of that. We've got some nice shape height there. It looks nice and full and everything looks really great. Now let's have a look at our ribbon. Let's just click on that. And again, our properties will be updated with that. And let's go ahead and use 0.3 maybe. Let's see if we can get that to really pop up and Let's give this a little bit more of a base height. There we go, and that is now up above. Now there's some things here going on. You'll see how the bottom of the ribbon doesn't isn't playing nicely with the bottom of our shield. If we just select that, then we should be able to nudge it down with our cursor keys. <clears throat> and maybe we can take off some of that shape height just a little bit to drop it down so it looks right. I says it takes off some base height. There we are. And that looks great right there, I think, and I'm happy with that. Now, I'm just going to thin this out a little bit. And the easiest way to do this is because we have, even though I was happy with this spacing to begin with, I think we're going to reduce that just slightly. So let's just grab these three components in the 2D view by holding down my shift key. And we can adjust the combined, or the shared base height here down to 0.2. There we are. Ah, that's better. Now I'm happy with that. Have a look there. Now, just one last little tweak I'm going to make before we move on to the next bit is I'm going to take this flourish right here and I'm going to just turn it slightly like so and then nudge it down just a little bit, maybe over a bit. There we go. I'm happy with that. And that all looks really good, I think. Now, typically on a coat of arms, there's some kind of a detail added to the face of the shield. And what I like to do with this one, I think, is to add a bit of a textured banner to it or a textured band diagonal through the shield. So in order to do that, I'm going to use our level effect called clipping that we talked about earlier. But in order to do that, I need to create a vector that I can use to create some kind of a textured component. So let's close this down. Now, the best thing we can do is to go ahead and create a brand new level. So I'm going to right click on flourishes and I'm going to say insert a new level. Then I'm going to slow click on this to rename that to banner. And we are going to put a dash clip because in the end I'm going to use this as a clipping level. And we'll press enter. Now I want to go ahead and create a vector outline of the top face of my shield. And the easiest way to do that is to use this bitmap representation and use our bitmap trace tool. So I'm going to, just so we can see everything a bit easier, I'm going to hide my flourishes. And I'm going to select that bitmap representation. And let's go to our drawing tab. And we're looking for our trace bitmap tool. So let's click that. Now, if you've never used this before, it's very easy. I'm basically going to go over this really quickly. We're going to choose uh, the type of tracing is going to be color. Um, we can use 16 colors. That's fine. And here's our actual color palette that we're going to use to select the colors that we want to trace. And we can choose our trace color. And then we have some other sort of tools down here that we can use to refine what we're going to do. But for now, what I'm going to do, instead of manually clicking through these colors, I'm just going to simply double click in my 2D view to select that area, the color that's on the face of this 3D shield. And that's perfect. And all of this is fine. I'm just going to click preview, apply, and close. And you'll see that I have a vector now that traces perfectly the top of that shield. Now, I don't want my banner to go right to the edge of the top of my shield. I want it to be inset just a bit. So let's select this boundary. And I'm going to offset that inwards. 0.1 of an inch and we can just click offset 
and close that down. And let's delete out the original one that we have. We don't need that anymore. So I'm gonna have a bit of a flat space here before we actually dip into the recess with the texture in it. I know it's not quite easy to tell right now what I'm trying to achieve, but in a second you'll see. The next thing I need is a rectangle. So let's just draw a rectangle. I'm gonna freehand this rectangle, something like that maybe. Let's hit apply, close, and then I can select that and press F9 on my keyboard to center that. There we have it. Now I'm gonna rotate that around and then I'm gonna move that into place. And the idea is it kind of needs to be the same angle as this top is right there, which I ha happen to just fluke that. And I want to make sure that it, the point of this is kind of centered in my rectangle. I think that looks pretty good. So let's hold down my shift key and grab both of those. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use my edit objects feature only keep overlapping sections of two vectors or selected vectors. In this case, it's only two. Let's go ahead and click that. And now I have left just this little banner here or partial rectangle that's gonna fit perfectly on the top of my shield. So now let's go back to our modeling tab for a moment. And we have the banner dash clip level selected here. And I'm gonna go now to my clip art tab and we're gonna find some kind of a texture that we can use to put in that rectangle. Now, if I go to decorative and we go down and look through this list, I think there's one here at the very bottom called linen fold. So let's double click on that and bring it in. And then we can just use our cursor keys and once we have it selected, nudge it down so that it's inside of this, so the inside of this rectangle is all filled with the texture. And let's just scale it down just a little bit. There we go, that's perfect. Now, so we can see better what's gonna happen here. Let's go back to our modeling tab and hide the center. And we're just gonna focus on what's going on here. So if I go ahead and select this vector, and I right click on my level, I can go down to clipping and I can select apply and notice what happens in my 3D view. I only see the piece that's inside of this vector. Everything else has been clipped away for me. So that looks really good. Now let's turn back on these two other levels that we've turned off and we'll see what we have. And that looks really nice, except for you'll see that this texture is proud of my shield and I need to fix that. So in order to fix that, what we're gonna do is we are going to select this component, go to our component properties, and we're gonna mess around with our shape height and base height here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to be 0.125. So we're gonna really, really exaggerate that texture, but we're gonna give it a base height. But Typically we would always give a positive base height, but in this case, I'm gonna give it a negative one, 0 0.15. So it's a little deeper than what the shape height is. And notice what happens in the 3D view. It actually moves down inside of my shield and there's a teeny bit of a drop here so that we'll get some nice definition when we do our tooling. And I'm very happy with that. Let's close that down. Let's look straight down on that again. Off click everything. Let's maximize our 3D view. And for effect, let's go ahead and turn on our shadow shading. And that looks pretty nice. I'm really happy with that. And that's all ready now to go ahead and create some tooling. Through this demonstration, I hope you could see the usefulness and the power of our level effects that we currently have available in our software. They're a great way to quickly and easily design a composition that is symmetrical, or is a great way, for instance, with level clipping, that you can non-destructively edit your clip art, and you can use it in all kinds of new and fun ways. Now it's time for you to go out and load up your software and create your very own coat of arms.